whenever you're being disciplined or corrected, you'll experience pain. And maybe that's our problem today when we discipline folks, they don't experience any pain. And I'm not even saying that every child needs to be beaten. Not all of them do. There are some children that you can discipline with a look. There are some of them that when you speak to them, their hearts are so tender. And they are broken just when you've spoken to them to say, you know what, I'm so disappointed. And it's as though you have just taken a two-by-four and slapped them upside the head. So you have to know correction doesn't necessarily mean beating. It's, it, discipline is correction in love. It is correction in love. That's, that's what chastening is, chastisement. It is correction in love. It's correction in love. And uh, there is sometimes pain. Uh, that is nothing more than discomfort that is created through disorder. It's interesting. Pain is sometimes discomfort created through disorder. When Job went through the most trying time of his life, he had no clue as to what God was doing in his life, and yet Job had to trust God. Have you ever noticed Job chapter 23, verses 8 through 10? It says, look, I go forward, but he's not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he works on the left hand, I cannot behold him, and he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him. But he knows the way I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. You have to see the big picture and find the gold, find the gold, find the gold. Now listen, your gold is in the fire. Your gold is in the fire. You have to go through the fire to find your gold. You never find the gold unless you go through the fire. And it's just when you go through the fire, I shall come forth as gold. You will never find your gold sitting under a shade tree with a glass of lemonade. You don't find your gold that way. You find your gold when somebody has knocked you to the ground and you're in a bad pickle and you've got to realize I've got to do something and I don't know what it is that I need to do. I don't know what I need to do. But you've got to be willing to go through the fire to get your gold. There is fire in the gold. There's gold in the fire, gold in the fire. So you have to learn how to go through the fire. There's a real strong understanding of, of what fire is all about. Fire has a wonderful ability to be able to purge you of some of the things that are obscuring your gold. Has you ever noticed how uh, when they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace, how did they go in? They went in bound, but God had their deliverance in the fire. When they looked through the window, they looked and said, did not we put these men in bound and now we look in here and see that they are all now loosed? They found the gold of their freedom in the fire. They found gold in the fire. They found gold in the fire. Gold in the fire. There is gold in every fiery situation in your life. Don't you ever go to a fire. Don't go to hell and high water and come out empty-handed. May I tell you that when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they did not come out of Egypt broke. They came out with the plunder of Egypt with the gold. They came out with the gold. God told them before they left, borrow gold of you, get the ring. Where do you think they got the gold to make the golden calf from? They had borrowed it. God didn't let them come out empty-handed. God paid them double for their trouble. Don't ever go through hell and high water and come out without your gold. There is gold in the fire. There's gold in the fire. There is gold in the fire. You come forth as pure gold from the fire. From the fire. Though I'm tried with the fire, you come forth as pure gold. So don't feel sorry for folks when they're going through the fire because they're getting ready to come out with something. Don't even feel sorry for yourself when you're in the fiery furnace because that's where your gold is. Your gold is in the fire. Your gold is in the fire. In your problem is where you find 
the creativity. And remember now that the key to being able to endure is to see the end from the beginning. The key to being able to endure is to see the end from the beginning. Now listen, no problem lasts forever. Just think about that. No problem lasts forever. No problem lasts forever. You have to, the moment that you have a problem or challenged area of your life, you have to see the end of it. See the end of your pain. The thing that makes pain unbearable is because you can't see an end to it. You know, we want to know, doctor, when is it going to hurt? Stop hurting. When, when is the swelling going to go down? You, you're trying to find the end of it. If we can just find the end of it, Lord, how, how much longer do I have to put up with this? See, the thing that drives people to divorce is because they can't see the end of the behavior that's aggravating them and frustrating them out of their wits. But if God told you, you know, two more weeks, and I'm going to deliver them. You know, isn't that amazing? Suppose, suppose you just had two more weeks. But the only reason that we couldn't wait the two weeks is because we, we can't see the end. We can't see the end. See the end of the pain. See the end of the frustration. See the end of your regret. See the end of the addiction. See the end of the poverty mindset. See the end of the guilt. See the end of the division. See the end of that thing. If you can see the end, you can make it through. You can honestly make it through if you can ever see the end of it. See the end of it. Isn't it amazing? End door. You can end door if you see the end up front. If you can just see that I will not always have to be in here putting in these kinds of hours. These big, huge jumbo jets burn 5,000 gallons of fuel on the takeoff. And, uh, but listen, you don't need that kind of fuel burned to sustain you in the air. It takes a whole lot to get a business off the ground. You're going to have to burn a lot of energy and a lot of effort and a lot of, uh, you know, praying and, and, and a lot of hours. It's, 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 got a, it's going to have to take a lot of stuff trying to get something airborne, trying to get it off the ground. It takes a whole lot, but the same amount that it takes to get it airborne is not the same amount that it takes to be able to sustain it. And so if you can understand that, that I've just got to do this sacrificially for X period of time, if you can see the end of it, you can do it. I mean, there's something about it. If I'm just telling you something, you will find another surge of power and strength. You will get another wind coming up under you. If you'll ever see the end, if you can see the place where I can get this mess out of me, the very thing that I've been carrying, that I've been trying to birth, if I can see my way to the end of this thing, I am going to be all right. I'm, I'm, I see my delivery room now, and you realize that I am pregnant with something from God. If I can see the end of the abuse, if I can see it, I can endure it if I can see the end from the beginning. If I can see it, and that's why you have to ask God for vision. You got to ask God for vision that God will show it. If God will show it to you, God can show it to you. God will show you that this will be the time of it. It's amazing if God ever gives you a, a, a glimpse into the timing of things, it will liberate your soul. The thing that frustrates it and makes it unbearable is because we don't know how much longer. That's the thing that wears us out is because, Lord, how long? How long? How long, God, am I going to have to wait for a husband? How long, how long for my wife? How long for the money, Lord? How long until this thing turn around, Jesus? And we just don't know. And it, and it breaks us down because we have no concept of the timing of the Lord. But God's a God of prophecy. God can show you. God can give you a, a, a vision of the night. God can give you a prophetic word to let you know three days and this thing is going to be over. God will let you know seven days, three months. God will speak something to you and let you know that this thing is drying up from the roots even now, even now, even now. Listen, you can make it through. Touch your neighbor. Say, you can make it through. You can make it through. You can make it through. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says it this way. For no temptation, this is an amplified version, no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience and such as a man can bear. 
but God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature and he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure but with the temptation he will always also provide the way out the means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently it's amazing When you're dealing with pain, I'm going to give you four quick things about pain. Pain motivates us, number one, to seek God like never before. Like never before. Pain motivates us to seek God like never before. You ever notice Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 through 26? Then Jacob was left alone. You know pain is intensified when you're by yourself. And a man wrestled with him unto the breaking of day. And now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. See, uh, before Jacob said that, that angel touched him and knocked his hip out of socket. And uh, that put him in pain. You ever had something to put, be pulled out of joint? And it's, his thing was, his hip was out of socket. And, and he said, oh, oh, no, no, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, he, now he's got a leg hanging. He's like, wait, wait, just a minute. I'm in pain now. And you done, you done, you done messed me up. And then he's got him. He said, I am not going to turn you loose. You're going to fix this. Uh, you are gonna, you're going to bless me. I am not turning you loose. There's something about pain that motivates us to seek God like never before. It's like, I'm not going to let you go. I am not going to let you go. Have you ever hurt so badly that it made you desperate? I mean, you were just desperate. And listen, when, when, when you're in enough pain, you, you can't be discriminating about, you know, uh, I, I don't want her to help me. Mm -mm. 